Hello, and welcome back to another CFD cookie with Wolf Dynamics. And this time we're going to talk about unsteady runs or U runs. So this video, this playlist, it is an extension of the previous two where we were talking about run simulations. So the good news is that the theory pretty much is, it is the same. I just, I'm just going to, to show you the small differences between steady on a steady runs and what you, you need to change, but everything, how we set up the case, pretty much it is the same. So in this video, we'll introduce you what we're going to cover in this playlist, which will be very interesting as we're now moving to on a steady, the real war. Now we start to resolve another scale, which is time. And the final one will be resolving time and a space. When I say resolving is capturing properly good definition. Okay. Because we are already resolving that. Okay. So by the way, before you just start, I need to rant about something this time. I would rant about the stock market these days. It has been crazy. It has been crazy days and I took big losses. In any case, I just need to rant about that. I don't want to digress too much. So now let me tell you what we're going to cover. So this will be our roadmap. So I divide the theory first. We're going to address this theory. Then we go to the practical tutorials will be the same flat play. Okay. So we know what we're doing. We know how to validate everything. Now we have time and well, pretty much we have covered this thing. So if you know these topics, you can skip, go ahead and, and, and do the tutorials. But in any case, some general knowledge. So after this, where we are, we are here. Now we started here runs. Now we're moving to U runs. And as you can see, we're building our way to this, unless that will be our next CFD cookie or probably transition. I don't know. Let me see how to organize my time. So this is where, where we are in our scale of turbulence models. And also very important something that we're going to cover in this series of video to demystify this concept. What is steady on a steady physics? What is steady on a steady solver? So you have to be care careful about that. And in this case here, we know the cylinder case. It is an unsteady case in the sense that you have no the physics, this vortex shedding in the wake, the for karma vortex street. And this is a truly unsteady phenomenon that to properly capture that you need to use an unsteady solver. However, you can use an unsteady solver with no problem. Okay. The difference is that your results are not going to be very physically realistic. Also, you are not to, going to capture frequencies. So be careful about that. Probably we're going to cover that. The other difference also will be that in on a steady, you have time a steady. It is an iterative margin, but also you can put iterations here. There is no problem. Uh, then coming back to the, our validation case, the zero pressure gradient flat play, as I mentioned, exactly the same case we already did it with runs models. Now we're going to move to runs. And as you can see, we have exactly the same solution. The difference is that probably, probably, okay, be careful, be careful about that. This one will be more time consuming because you can, you need to resolve time, but sometimes not, this is not necessarily the case. Sometimes the steady case can be more time consuming for whatever reason. Okay. But let's say in generally speaking, it should be faster this one. Okay. Uh, and then moving to the flat play case, and now we go fully on a steady. And look at that. We have two solutions here. This is the Urans. And many times when you run a Urans, people will be interested in seeing something like this, seeing the on a steadiness. But in reality, you get this. Nothing is happening, but look at that. This is the right solution. Okay. And here you have this on a steady uh, behavior. Okay. But this is extremely difficult to capture using or run simulations, and we're going to discuss that. So this is the myth of resolving scales with or run models, and that's why we need to move to scale resolving simulations, the other models. By the way, here also we're going to show you how to add forcing or tripping no instabilities in your simulations. You see here we we trip not this unsteady behavior. The solution is not the same, but in any case, we know that we're getting the good, the right behavior because we're mashing this. Okay. But this is top boundary conditions. Everything, it is exactly the same. And to show you another case, we move now, we go 
away from the bubble of that flat play. And now we go to something more three dimensional. I look at that running, running different turbulence models. Okay, we get, when we look at scale resolving, which is less than so DNS, here we resolve all these nice vertical structures in Urans. See that we're not resolving that. And this is what I was talking about. Know that in Urans, you don't solve these instantaneous fluctuations. This is a stretching and the breaking of the vortices. Those are the instantaneous fluctuations that recall everything is modeled in RAN. So that's why do you see this? Sometimes it might happen that a new runs can give you the impression that you are resolving that, but that is the section rather than the rule. And when I see those behaviors, I might be a little bit suspicious about that because it shouldn't happen, okay? But it can happen, okay? So look at that here, we have this nice solution this tree that well it's going to restart but this tree they show nice colors okay this vortex breaking and so on look at that at the beginning the days shows that kind of an urans behavior but then it switch and show us something more similar to ls just to give you now <clears throat> a preview at this it will be kind of a hybrid between urans and ls simulations but it's not only about colors Okay, you need also to quantify integral quantities. So when we look at the integral quantities, look at that we have experimental results on all the models, less this, as all this stuff here, all these three are, or let's say less this and laminar are scale resolving. SAS is a variation, something between let's say this and all runs, okay, it can be the less and all runs similar to this. And then we have all runs that everything is mobile with wall functions, no wall functions and brands. Okay, and look at that, pretty much all of them, except for laminar, which we can say it is a DNS or if the mesh is not good enough, unresolved DNS, look at that, all of them are similar to or close to the experimental values. You have drag coefficient, but also have a stronghold number, which is related to the frequency. In RANS, which is the steady, you cannot get that because you don't have that time dimension, that scale. But look at that, all of them are very similar. Even the RANS, which is a steady, which in theory doesn't capture all this behavior, but the average quantity will be captured, okay? So remember that RANS, when it comes to average values, I mean, many times in engineering applications, we are interested in, in that average value. But also many times you might be interested in that on a steady value, on those frequencies and so on. But look at that, all of them are similar. The only one that is far, far away from this one, it is the laminar. Drag coefficient and a strohal number. And just to <clears throat> enforce this concept that turbulence modeling, it is very important. And here you see it in action what we're doing, okay? It's that extra ingredient that you add to your simulation just to get closer, to get physically realistic values. But even if you are getting nice results here, nice colors, look at that, you're very far. So be careful with laminar DNS, okay? That it requires extreme magnifying meshes, that's all. <laughs> very small time step. By the way, these results that you see here, this is done with OpenFone. Honestly, I need to update this, okay? This table is a little bit old, I think. Uh, it was open from 4, I'm quite sure that with the newest version, better agreement, probably tiny change. We'll also have another computer, but in any case, it next on, on a day, but this is done with open from also same results with Fluent and any sol solver you should, should get something similar. You have here the references of the case. And to mention something about Urans now, we were talking about the, what we want to do is to remove the fluctuations. So if we look at this signal, now you have all this instantaneous, instantaneous fluctuations. We want to model that because it's very expensive. So it's what, why, that's why we take this approach of, of Reynolds average. So, so far in RANS, steady RANS, we were making this assumption that the mean value, it is steady, it's not changing. So if that is your real physics, this is perfectly okay, you go, steady iterative margin super fast. But in reality, and I have to say, for me, all, everything, it is on a steady, but sometimes you can make some assumptions and say that, well, I can approximate that behavior to the, to the steady and that is okay. But many times you need to take on a steady behavior that on a steady approach. And that happens when the mean, it is also fluctuated. So see that you have your instantaneous fluctuations, you apply your technique, you remove that one, you model that, but then on the, below that, okay, you will have the, the orange line, okay? It is that mean value. And look at that, it's oscillating in time. And that is 
what we in reality see in Ulrans. In Ulrans, we are not going to see the instantaneous fluctuation. Remember, that is that is model. Sometimes, whatever coin, whatever reason might happen that you can capture something, but it's not the reality. You are getting the mean value. Okay. And it is very important that uh, in Ulrans, no, in order to capture that, you need to have a separation between a small and large time scale. That is something known as a spectral gap. Okay, and in sometimes this spectral gap is very small. And you can imagine that when you apply that averaging, the averaging for the smaller scales is going to remove also the long period averaging. And that's why you don't see that in Ulrans. Okay, and many times you are trying to solve on a steady behavior and you don't see that on a steady behavior because this is what is happening. That averaging is removing also that oscillation. So somehow you need to uh, add more energy, add <clears throat> some uh, add some some forcing, some tripping to to keep to you know to to trigger that behavior. And just to show you here a little bit now more about uh uh, the different behaviors that you, that you get you can here we have this simulation here you have the the reference and look at that you have a steady behavior okay then Ulrans, Ulrans better mesh and then we go here scale resolving so look at that i was telling you that it's not going to capture this no scale resolving behavior all the vortex uh, 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 all the the, the the vortex stretching and so on it's going to get this okay then for whatever reason in this case a much finer mesh kind of tend to capture that, but you don't get all the uh, small scales. Okay, so this is what we have in Ulrans. And also to mention, why do we want to do Ulrans? If I'm interested in this, why do I want to do this Ulrans? Remember that in Ulrans, we we can use very large time step. We have the wall modeling, okay? You can use relative large meshes near the wall. You don't have the, the same requirements that you have in a scale resolvers they are very very time consuming okay so the same measures that you use for any of these they are not going to work here they are going to add a lot of dissipation okay here you require fine meshes here is something better affordable that you can you do in your meshes okay in your computers so here well you have some comments and as i mentioned all uh, run simulations are are diffusive in both space and time okay and many times you might have the perception that time scales are being resolved, okay? And that is just a coincidence. Time and space is, uh, scales, now let, let me add, something like this. Something, okay, something similar to, to that, but that is the section, okay? And to show you a few examples, okay, this is a runs, uh, a desk, sorry. So remember, a desk close to the wall, it is Ulrans, so my mesh requirements at the wall are, are a little bit loose. They are not the same as for less or DNS, so that lets me, allows me to reduce my cell cam, but also allows me to run maybe larger time steps, okay, uh, save memory and so on. But look at that, this win aerodynamic body, look at that, we're resolving all these scales, you now the vortex separation and so on. Uh, by the way, this is a nice concept, speedoidal winlet, well, I don't want to talk about that, but simulation done with open phone, by the way. Uh, and getting this behavior with a runs it is extremely difficult. I don't want to, to use the word impossible, but it's super difficult, okay? But even with a less or a D desk, this is also very tricky to get. So in this case, we managed to unset this behavior because we have an angle of attack. There is separation. It can be done. But imagine that you put this wind at zero degrees. Getting this is difficult. So somehow you need to trip that behavior, trigger that behavior to get not all these three-dimensional structures. Similar stuff are done in physical experiments, by the way. You just put a, a trigger element and then you trigger the transition from laminar to turbines. Another example, so this case, everything, it is in the physics, no, the, 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 the unsteady, the separation and so on. This case, it is moving, okay? A sliding meshes approach we're using here, so there is nothing to do. In this case, by definition, it is on a steady, so you cannot say, okay, let me take the steady hypothesis. Here, you can take it. It is up to you. Okay, so you are interested in average value, the forces pretty much I'm quite sure that we're going to get similar values to the average of the on a steady. If you want to capture all the vertical structures, you're not going to get that with a steady. You need to go on a steady. Here, nothing to do. 
on a steady, then another case. By the way, this is Urans, okay? We're using normal K omega ST. This is another case, Urans, moving body. So when things are moving, nothing to do. You need to use Urans approaches, okay? On a steady runs, which as I say, is the same stuff of, as runs. The only thing that you have time. Uh, everything is exactly the same. Wall functions, nothing change, okay? Basically, you add just the wall velocity to everything and that's all. Then also it can happen due to another way that you can have that behavior. You have surface uh, phases, two different phases, multi-phase flows usually are on a steady in nature. Plus, in this case, also we have really body motion. But imagine that this body is not moving. Okay, you are going to have the multi-phase and that for to resolve that, you need to add time. You need to move to on a steady behavior. Which, by the way, with multi-phase, pretty much the treatment, it is the same. The only difference is that you have two phases. And to end, uh, and to mention here that triggering instability forcing transition to turbulence. To mention something about that. So we saw two cases now in these slides that we have the square cylinder and the circular cylinder. Okay, getting triggering this behavior here, all the vortex structures and getting now the vertical structures. It is very difficult in the cylinder case, okay? Because kind of the flow tends to be attached to the to the body and getting that separation, that transition from laminar to turbulence can be really tricky. Instead, in the square one, it is quite easy. Now you have the square and the separation happens immediately, okay? And situ when a situation analogous to the, this can happen in industrial application. And here you have two cases where you can find this behavior, no? that you say, wow, but why I cannot trigger this, this wake? Because you need somehow trigger that instability, you need to add some forcing, okay? So classical applications, aircraft, submarines, and stuff like this, aerodynamic bodies, so slender bodies. So be careful about that. I'm going to mention how to do it. And the case, the flat play also show you know, the animation. I triggered that. Okay. Usually this behavior now happen, no transition to turbulence and so on. Reynolds numbers, no less than 1 million. This stuff it can be, you no, know, it can give you a lot of head age. Also, <laughs> as many times also running a scale resolving simulation, even over runs, you will notice that. Uh, this behavior is going to decay in time because the energy it is dissipated, it is diffused. So you need to somehow add a forcing, okay, a forcing turn just to keep that energy into the system. So there are many ways to do that. This is one is in the boundary condition that you add that fluctuation, add sources in the domain, whatever. But there are many many ways to do it. And just to show you a few of the nuances that you are going to find with on a steady runs. So hopefully in the next videos, uh, uh, you, you, uh, we're going to cover many, uh, all these topics. Also, you're going to find it. Uh, I think you're going to find it very interested, but if you're there and know the, the theory, you can skip, go ahead to the tutorials, but yeah, this will be a very interesting series of videos building now our way to, uh, to, uh, less simulation, less simulations and so on. So thank you for your attention and see you in the, in the next videos. Bye.